them and then incinerating them, burning them in a furnace and getting the ashes and the heavy to surface. So this is going to be the important criteria to manage the price. I mentioned there is a challenge in textile lives. So in my lab, we have worked out for certain aspect related to the known microbes, bacteria that are occurring in the wastewater. Yes, we were able to isolate certain bacteria which are have, having enormous potential to degrade the textile lab. Yeah. So what we have done, we have collected the textile effluent from the native effluent we have collected the bacteria. Yes. And then we have assessed them, the capability to decolorize the dye that is used in particular season. This is going to be important to know about that. In every season, different type of dyes are going to be used by industries. Textile industries are not going to use simple single dye throughout the year. They are going to use different type of dye throughout the year because as the demand, some of the, uh, and the demand of, yes, coloring is different, winter's demand is going to be different and for them coloring that dyes are going to be different. And importantly, it is going to be uh, the point that you need to note that dyes are not going to be single component. They are going to be multiple they are going to be compound mixture. Yes, they are compound and mixture. Me. So that they can give. Hello. We can have durability, color, yes, longevity. That is going to be there. Uh, but when we are going to talk about uh, uh, the bacteria uh, yes, or microbes that are going to be there. Just like you might be aware about the phenotypic trisogeny. Quite well known for production of certain enzymes. Yes. You might have studied about okay. that, Anjay, which is capable of detoxifying or degrading blood penny so, extra uh, dye. I cannot change the dye. Enzyme, I mean, I like lectase, magnesium peroxidase. So, YouTube mein dekha yes. Skin so, talking about this, we, so, we have looked out in a different way. We have out. isolated the native bacteria from the particular textile dye effluent and then checked out the Dye color, uh, decoloration management or assay. And what we have found that the bacteria were having kept quite capable to, to degrade. And we were able to degrade the textile dye and prove that whatever degraded material were there, we have assessed that they are not going to further contaminate the norm. So we have assessed the cytotoxicity, cytotoxicity. So that when we are going to say that. Uh, we are going to recommend that if, if we need to get rid of particular textile dye, we need to use this bacteria. And this bacteria means this is not going to further let the textile dye to contaminate animals. Yeah. So it's not that the capability of single bacteria is going to be there. Yeah. So just like I mentioned, there are going to be complex dyes that are going to be there. So every time the people are going to use different different dyes. So if we are going to say single bacteria is having capability and they are free to be used, every time it not go to water. The yeah, challenge is there. So what we have found out, we have found out that there is going to be consortium of bacteria that are going to be there. Consortium means that there are going to be two, three more bacteria or their group is going to be there. They are going to be different. They are going to be used along with each other, which are going to have compatibility. That is going to show much more Yes, much more capability to degrade certain different type of types. Yeah, so we have done that also in our lab. We have find out the synergy activity of dietary bacteria and try to develop certain consortia. And then we have, yes, check the possibility of capability of this consortium to degrade many types. And we got good results. Just like this, you can see the color change. Yeah, the color change of red dye 167, and we have published this in International Journal of Environmental Science. Yeah, recent 2022 only. So you can see the change in color. Also, there is not only the change in color is there. There is the capability of 
bacteria to not only degrade, yes, decolorize, but also to degrade. So that we going to convert them into byproducts which are not going to be creating further harm to our environment, to water, where the eyes are going to be charged. So bacteria are going to have quite competitive. Also, it is going to be quite interesting one, which are going to be useful for getting rid of these textile dyes that are going to be important. Yes. So we have checked out the capability of these dye when we dye degrading consortium along with uh, this uh, when we are going to multiply this bacterial consortium and going to apply over there in and we are going to use over there in the Nala itself. Our, actually we have tried all the thing in lab only but uh, now we are trying to move it to the uh, actual condition where they are going to be there. But prior to that, we, we need to confirm that, yes, they were not going to create further contamination. So we have checked out the toxicity. So that what changes are they are when we are going to use the bacteria, they are showing good, yes, degradation capability, decolizing capability. But also byproducts are going to form. They are not going to further creating challenges. So we have assessed through, yes, allium safer. That is going to be a standard, yeah, gold method. So that we have checked out the byproducts are not going to create certain challenges or abrasion in the chromosome. And we were on that. Yes, the degraded products were not having that. They were not having capability. They were not showing any chromosome abrasion. So we can say that these degraded products are quite shaped. So that we are not going to create further challenges. Talking about the biological ways, agro ways, yes, we have worked on ISERF and we have converted it to a gold, black gold, which is known as biochar. Biochar, why I am saying it to be biochar? Because uh, a black, uh, black gold, because it's going to show what kind of capability to get rid of influence. Yes, very heavy metals. Again, it is going to be when it's going to be used in soil, it's going to act as a yeah, soil fortification, it's going to enrich the carbon content of soil. So it's a type of thing which we have developed that is showing quite good capability to get rid of yeah, industrial dyes in metal, just like removal of cadmium, chromium, arsenic, not many high metals have been found to effectively treated or removed by the help of these biochar. So what is unique about biochar? Uniqueness of our biochar is we are preparing it from the waste aggregate itself. So when we say biochar, it is going to be just like char only, but char is going to be creating them. Uh, when we are going to burn the agro waste, it is going to turn it into ash, but we are burning it in agro waste under unsufficient or less amount of oxygen. No amount of oxygen is we are trying to restrict it, but you can see it. Uh, this is quite traditional kind of thing. Setup is there. We can't avoid all oxygen, but yes, we have tried to avoid. But we were capable to convert them into biochar, and that biochar was very important to remove and getting rid of the yes getting rid of heavy metal from the effluent of textile and leather textiles. yeah it was very helpful in reducing the ph yeah maintaining the ph just like when the leather industry and textile industries are going to discard their effluent it gets mixed with the normal water and the ph certainly drops so in order to regain the pH, if we are going to have a channel made up of biochar and when we are going to pass the effluent to them, the biochar is going to absorb all the metal so that the less toxic effluent is going to pass. Yeah. So this we have tried to work out in our university itself. We have created, yes, on-site experiment on the Footprint, yeah, that is 
wastewater drain that is passing through LPU. Actually, this setup is there. No? If, uh, we were not having so much of uh, it was start, so we, we were not having anything over there. So that uh, means uh, to take it to Budanal. We have tried that also. I will discuss that also to uh, what we have done to manage the uh, wastewater of that Budanala drain. But talking about this, the wastewater drain that is passing in LPU, we have tried to work on that. So we have developed a kind of system that is, yes, that is going to be bamboo cage, cage was there and that was built, that, and that was layered with certain coconut coil was used, biochar was used, foam was used to raise this uh, plant so that we are going to get two, three things simultaneously. Yeah, when the water is going to pass through this, yes, on-site filter, it is going to be treated by biochar and whatsoever elements are going to be captured over there by biochar is going to be used by this plant to survive. And this was found to be quite interesting. The results that I am sharing with you are quite promising results and they are allowed us to take this experiment further, take this yes protocol to develop a kind of system for which we got a project from yes dvt and canada yeah so this was all about that yeah rices we have used and we have piled them yes so that it has now been going to have capability to yes absorb the heavy metal that is passing through it and going to support the plants for instance and what we have found that the water that has been treated with this was having not only good BOD, COD, reduced BOD, COD, alkalinity, hardness, pH, EC, TDS, TSS, but also certain heavy, heavy metals just like you can see over here zinc, lead, nickel, barium, iron, magnesium, chromium, magnesium, calcium, copper, tellurium, aluminum. All air metals have been created. and that that shows the promise, promising input of these agroways to be used as a biochar. It's not that only these rices can be used; we can use straw also. Straw also can be converted to biochar and can be used. But the thing is that the important is going to be the, the conversion of this. If we are not uh, going to control this conversion, it going to we are going to get ash only. So it's going to be controlled conversion under under insufficient supply of oxygen so that it can go. Right? So that is my promising work uh, by our group. Just like these, uh, we have implemented these on the sludge drain that is passing through the LQ. We have filled it in new uh, bags and floated over there in the Nala. That, so Nala means river water, uh, you can see, this is LP only, over there we have kept them so that they can treat, yes, the water under natural condition, the wastewater under natural condition. Not only one site, we have put this set up in four sites. We have tried to put it in Budanala also. Yeah, this is that, you can see. We have tried so that if we, if we can use this on a large scale, it will be quite efficient and going to be promising. So that we can uh, we can ask government to use this. So we have tried to, and we got successful results also. We have tried to develop this strategy of using biochar for treatment uh, in a manner so that it could be commercialized. We have used reinforced fiber, yes, jackets. And in them, when we pass the water that is from the this river water, uh, drain only, we got good results. You can see over here. First five days, we got a good result. So that we can say that yes, this much capability is there. And if we can, if we can recharge, replace this uh, condenser with the new one, we are going to get the picture. So over here you can see the picture of our vice chancellor also there. He was a PI of the project. We were very lucky to have him over here. He is 
they are emeritus scientists in University of Iowa State US. So this has been explored over there in Budanala and what we got a good change in color and change in every aspect related to PC, yes, PH, BOD, COD, PSS, TDS. So we can say that yeah, biochar is a promising agent. Why what makes biochar to be promising agent? This is that. Biochar is going to have a kind of layer, yeah. It is going to have charge layer so that it is going to have tendency to complex, co precipitate and going to bind. Let the bind let bind to heavy metal too. So these are the properties that when we are going to burn the agriculture waste, especially straw and us under control condition in absence of oxygen, we are going to burn. We have worked out in management of plastic also. This work has been done by my PhD scholar. Now she has submitted her final thesis. And what we have found that bacteria were capable to degrade fat. Specifically, this was important to note that what we have worked was on rhizobacteria. It's important to note about rhizobacteria. They are not going to be the normal bacteria. They are the bacteria which are going to be there in the root region of the plants. They are going to help the plant to survive. So the pure benefit we have found out. The plant, the bacteria that are going to be there in the, the register region of the plant. And when plants are going to be there in the region where the plastic pollutants are there, and they are going to secrete, and they are going to be, yes, raising certain enzymes which are going to be helpful in degradation of this plastic. We were able to find out that. And we were lucky that uh, we got some important consortium prepared and that is published in a non science and function research journal recently. So that the, the, the good things are there which I need to share over here. So what we have found till now is that whatsoever pollutant is going to be there. Uh, Capability of natural sources are there, whether it's going to be agro waste, whether it's going to be microorganism, it's going to be bacteria, it could be fungi. Yes. Yeah? So important is going to be to know about not knowing only about the microorganism, but to know about yes, yeah, what the process efficiency is there, what safe stability is there, yes, yeah? what dynamic is there going to be there, metabolic mechanisms are going to be there. Right? So these features are going to be very important as far as this is concerned and I hope you people are going to work on this and going to explore out and going to find out and it's going to be good if you are going to work out and going to find out certain things which are going to be, yeah, for publishable, not only publishable but going to help our society. Just like what we have seen about the pesticide, this is going to be important work that I need to show you regarding pesticide, what we have worked on. So you can see when we are going to uh, use the pesticide, it is going to create challenges over there. Not to overuse is going to create the problem to, yes, plants, but also to soil biodiversity. Not only to plants and soil biodiversity, but also to the nutrient that are there in the soil. When they, when they bind with pesticide, they are not going to be available to, yes, further generation, they get trapped. So what we need to do, we need to have a control on this pesticide. So also work I have done till so now, till, uh, so, uh, till now uh, have been published and we have received two patents also for that. Grant, two granted patents are there. Just like I've shown you, the process of remove hair metal from the system is the biochar, that for that we got patent. Yeah, the filtration assembly that I have shown, for that also we got the patent. So I am very much thankful to my team, my senior, yes, special thanks to my team of school, Dr. Neetara Sharma, my team members, my PhD scholars, and all my faculties who have promoted and boosted me to work on this. So this was all related to work that I have my team have carried out. Thank you. Thank you, Chef, for sharing this wonderful information and all the 
very nice content with our participants. I hope all of you have learned nicely. So now the session is open for discussion. If anybody is having any query, uh, maybe they can either post it in chat box or uh, you can open the switch on your mic and speak. So we have one question from Rona Rai. Why consortium is used instead of single microbes or genetically modified organisms? Why you have preferred uh, yeah. consortium? This, this is going to be the quite interesting to know that consortium is going to be a type of bacteria that are going to have capability to degrade multiple uh, products. Or I can say that once the particular textile is going to be broken down, it is going to convert it to it is going to change its form, and that form is not going to be degraded by that bad bacteria. For that, other bacteria are going to be there. And it's going to be a multiple step process to get complete degradation of that. If we are going to use single bacteria, it is going to, yes, of course, going to degrade, but not going to degrade to a manner so that it's not going to be, uh, be uh, we can assure, uh, we can surely say that it is not going to create a problem. So, degradation by microorganism is not that we are going to create one more pollutant which is going to be harmful. To, to get partic uh, a particular pollutant completely removed, we need to rely on consortium. Regarding ge genetic micro, uh, this GMO, yeah, it is also having a special, uh, a specific characteristic property. Just like uh, we, uh, the important point I need to focus over here is that pseudo uh, pseudo monastrida, Professor Anand Chakravarti, yes, that is patented one, and that is having. That is also that uh, having four different genes, yeah. That is also a uh, the, uh, GMO that that has been derived from four different uh, enzyme emulgation of enzymes. So that were having capability to not only degrade the petrol hydrocarbon but other also. Very thank you, sir. So in simple words, we can say consortium will work better than a single bacteria. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, then the unit is having more power. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so that is okay. Very nice uh, information. And uh, one more thing before we go to the next question, I'm seeing some students are posting several questions. So one information to everyone: we are waiting for one of the society member to join with us. They will be. They are having some very good uh, you know, offers for all of you. So I think they will join in a, in a while, and then we will continue with that also. I think they have joined, but we'll take some questions and then. Uh, uh, they will be giving you some information regarding the societies and what benefits you can get uh, to remain associated with the society. So I think we have uh, one more question from, I don't know what is the name, Tanvir, I think. Yeah, Tanvir Pillar. Yeah. He is our ex-student. So they now, are asking, could yeah, you please suggest the best raw material for biochar production? Yeah. So Tanvir, yes, uh, we can rely on uh, many products, just like agro I mentioned. So what uh, my team has worked on, straw and uh, husk, that are very commonly found in Punjab. It's not that uh, that uh, these are going to be there, but others uh, which are going to have fibrous kind of thing, the structure that is fibrous are going to be very good to be used as a biochar because they are going to have absorber, absorption power. So those plant material, those waste which are going to have absorbing good absorption power can be used for making biochar. Okay, thank you, sir. Before we go to the next question, I have one question uh, of my own. <laughs> that is, like, if we are using bioabsorbent material for removal of toxic materials, the toxic toxic material will go inside the bioabsorbent material. So, but right. it's not getting lost. Uh, like, you know, how we will ultimately you know, clean it. Great. Desorption is the method through which we are going to remove that. Desorption is the method, but it is going to again require chemical that is going to be there. Nitric acid is being used, uh, sulfuric acid is being used. But I need to uh, tell you over here that uh, just like uh, the bi the biochar we have uh, prepared and in that uh, jute bags we have used, and after five days, we, what we found that the, the, the they get saturated. So after that, it is going to be our duty that to take them out and then burn it under control condition so that ash and heavy metal go to separate it. But the challenge what we have faced was to separate heavy metals from these. So, but challenge is also would be always going to be there. 
that will always be there. So we have yeah, thank you, sir. We have one more question from uh, Deepan. Dutch congestion means here biofilm for degradation. Is that so? Uh, not uh, biofilm. Actually, biofilm is a kind of uh, aggregation of uh, certain bacteria which are going to have certain uh, uh, release. Uh, the uh, release of certain uh, kind of black uh, protein or some kind of material that is going to help them to bind. So that is going to have certain signal. But what consortium we, uh, we mean to say, we are finding individual bacteria that are there, which are having capability to degrade the, the, uh, the toxic metabolites that are formed after each stage of particular degradation of that dye. So, this is going to be totally different. Again, when we are going to isolate bacteria from industry equipment, we have used enrichment technique so that we got only four or five bacteria that were having capability. And of them, one was showing the best. So that was best. So we have used. And once it has been, it has been used, it converted to uh, the diet to next level. And for that level, other bacteria that was there, second bacteria was found capable. So, consumption is totally different kind of thing. Okay. Yes. So, I think one of the questions which was posted by Gulfan Ahmed, I think it was almost answered in the same answer which Sir had given just now. So, I will not be asking that question. And there is there is one more question which has been asked by Dr. Saurabh Shukla. He is asking, is biochar helpful in removing pesticides from wastewater? Can we remove uh, pesticides also? Yeah. Actually, we haven't worked on that aspect. Uh, actually, uh, we are not uh, uh, taking bio to that extent. That is going to be wonderful if we are going to check it out. Maybe some students can try in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. projects yeah. or maybe in PhD yeah. works. So, do we have uh, any other uh, question? Uh, I am getting one more question uh, from Rana Rai. Why yeah. do? Uh, why so far we did not uh, prepare a water treatment technique with consortium biofilms which have more degradation rate? Why there is no yes. such technique available commercially? Okay. That is what so I have to point, point out over here, Rona, that uh, we are using this, and you might be aware about the tricking filters in, uh, that is used in secondary wastewater yes. treatment. It is there, commercialized. But uh, yes. over, talking over here, yes. yeah. But talking over here, the wastewater that is going to come out is not going to be always remain safe. So, for that, uh, what I am uh, pointing out that tricking reactor is used for only treating the sewage wastewater. So, for treating industrial wastewater, it's going to be quite challenging because every time the industry is not going to run. Yeah, sometimes yeah. steel industry is going to release, sometimes leather industry is going to release. The total, there is going to be diversity in uh, diversity of pollutant going to be there. So, we need to focus on the particular industry and we need to track it over there so that we can do that. So, this is a challenge which we are having. Yes, yes. So, um, any, any, any more questions from the participants? Anybody else is having any question? I need to add over here, Ronit. Uh, actually, what we have tried to find out solution for a particular industry problem, and uh, this is uh, challenging also. Challenging means when we move to industry and uh, when we take in their influence, it was very harsh influence. It was having pH of two, and that was very challenging because it could to burn our biochar itself. So that is the challenge that we are facing, and uh, really, uh, in near future, we are going to find out certain things that are going to work. On. This is really a burning uh, issue, and we need to tackle it. So, is there any more question? Uh, I think Deepan is asking one thing related to trickling filter. I think I have already answered it myself. So, we are getting one more question. Oh, it's not a question; it's a suggestion. But definitely, thank you, Sanam. Uh, you uh, for your words definitely you, to arrange something practically in future as well yeah yeah of course okay so any other question from any other comment so so she is saying it's a question sanam so okay 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 very much okay. Control, yeah we agree we have presented it to yes. the government actually government are having so much of uh, 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 solutions towards uh, get uh, they are getting so much of solution they are uh, really tired uh, they want some patented work that has been commercialized and some results there but we have already got so for that we need to uh, collaborate with certain industries because we already get patent now 
so we need to collaborate with industry and try to find out a uh, uh, three to five year study so that government is going to implement that so that is challenge but uh, in future we are going to meet that it's a good one mm-hmm. any any other question maybe we will we can take the last question last one question maybe somebody want to speak on mic and they want to ask their question anyone okay so fine i hope you are done so once again we would like to thank uh, dr joginder sir uh, for taking out the time from his busy schedule and uh, you know taking the session in the evening hours where <laughs> that too on weekends when everybody is busy so thank you sir once again all of you will be receiving your certificates by 7:15 pm sharply there is a reference code in that and regarding that uh, one of our society member will give you information and he is having some great information related to the society so now i would like to invite uh, dr sai ramesh uh, to brief everybody about the society its plans in future dr sai ramesh over to you dr sai ramesh yeah got am i audible sai yes you are audible Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is my screen visible to you, everyone? It's loading. Yeah. Please uh, put it on full screen. It is on full screen, I guess. So it, it is just four slides. i will finish quickly so please everybody be here he is going to give some good offers to everyone now we cannot see your screen now Yes, it is loading, but not full screen. Yeah, now it is full screen. Yes, thank you. So, let me first thank the chief guest uh, for giving this wonderful talk. Uh, on behalf of the society, I would like to thank Joginder sir for his uh, wonderful presentation, which is a much needed uh, topic too. And I am sure uh, the all the members who are present here would have been benefited out of it. and uh, that is our one form of credit where sesb is trying to work upon so let me just introduce our society to each and every one of us who are there in this particular meet so we are proud to tell that uh, we are one of the uh, india's first synthetic biology society association and uh, we have established in the year 2019 and uh, our society has a clear vision and mission where we purely work to join together uh, people on both life science as well as engineering in one single platform and uh, these are the people who try to work uh, purely on synthetic and chemical biology and uh, we strive to uh, take the society to an international standard where we try to conduct conferences year after year since we have established that is since 2019 we have continuously conducted uh, national level conferences and international conferences on the name of society of chemical and synthetic biology uh, in association with the various reputed institutions to each one of you uh, at the end of this particular meet regarding the upcoming conferences we do have one proposed for the current year 2022 the theme of the conference is on microbiome and synthetic biology which will be happening in bharathidasan university trichirapalli tamil nadu india and we do have workshops associated with the conference where we try to work on crispr 
uh, which will be falling on September 24, 2022. Rest all details regarding the registration and how to get it registered, the pamphlet of the uh, conference will all be circulated to you separately in the WhatsApp group so that you can go through and if interested, you may join the conference. Usually the conference have a uh, separate fee for normal uh, non-ACSB participants, but if you are a member of ACSB, your registration amount goes into a consideration of fee waiver. There will be a percentage of fee waiver depending on the time you register, get registered with the conference. Uh, all the details will be posted in the website, which you have to follow it up on a regular interval. And uh, regarding the membership, which is the most important part, uh, the uh, student membership is uh, cost you around 1200 INR. And uh, the uh, difference from all the other societies, usually the student membership and annual membership is always given for one single year but we have differentiated it. We have student membership, which goes for 1,200 rupees and uh, it is for three years. That is, we have planned for uh, students' benefit, for the benefit of the students, where if you take the membership, it will last for three years. Only for students, we have given this. And uh, the lifetime membership is rupees 3,500 for all academicians and 7,000 for industry personnel. And uh, there, there are a few uh, um, advantage and uh, concessions. We are working on it in such a way that if you are going to have a chapter-based registration where we enroll uh, more than 10 or 15 candidates at a stretch, your uh, uh, registration fee for students uh, goes up to rupees 500 for a period of four years. This is usually for the benefit of the engineering students who are there because the professional degrees are usually for four years. So uh, we try to provide such offers so that the students are getting benefited out of it. And same way, uh, Gaurav would have told you regarding today's uh, uh, certificate and the uh, codes where we have given you a offer code if you are going to register it within next five or ten days maybe before august 31st uh, the second category will be falling in where uh, if you pay rupees 500 for students it will be for four years and uh, the lifetime membership will be 2500 for academicians and 3000 for industry all other queries and uh, your registration form uh, we'll be circulating it to you regarding the membership and all the website details will be circulated to you uh, up at the end of this uh, meet, even through the meet chat as well as through the WhatsApp group. Uh, any other clarification, you can post to me directly. Gaurav, am I clear and uh, anything else? Yes, to be yes. yes, I think it's clear and it's a good and great offer for anyone. So. Thank I you. hope these people would have received their certificate with the offer codes, I guess. Yes, they will be receiving it by 715. 715. Yeah, today. Yes. Yeah. So there will be a reference code which they can use. And in the mail itself, you guys will be getting your, uh, you know, a link for registration if you are interested. Yes. It will be up to you. Uh, so I think uh, that's it. Uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, uh, our uh, chief guest and speaker for today, Dr. Joginder sir, and all the participants for uh, actively participating participating in the session. And we will be conducting such sessions in future also. You can keep uh, looking to our uh, WhatsApp uh, group also. You can uh, invite your other friends as well to join that group so that they can get our regular updates. And uh, next month, we have planned three of such lectures. We will be sharing you the details shortly. Thank you all. Thank you once again. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Joginder, sir, once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir.